So today I woke up and chose violence. You guys might be wondering why there are three keys here and that's because I'm one of those weird people who play with their index and ring finger when they play Osu. You might be wondering why I didn't just leave a gap between the keys, just like Pro X keypads, but well, for me, I find the key in the middle extremely essential. It makes it way more comfortable when I'm just mashing away trying to squeeze every ounce of stamina I have left out of my hands. And you might also be wondering why I named the title the way it is. And well, I was spite because I'm a really petty bit. Okay, okay, just... Am I? Am I kidding? Okay, so basically there's a company called Lotus Pro. They sell also keypads and well, if you haven't seen that massive video about them, please go watch it because my basic summary right now doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg of their company. But basically, they opened pre-orders for a 3 key version of their keypad back in July last year. And right now, May is already ending and they still don't have a working prototype. If there's any Lotus customer out there that's going to be scammed, it's those people who ordered the 3 key keypads and the 87 keyboard. At least for the 2 key, they can send out the products because they have the product. But as for the 3 key and the 87, they never had their own working prototype. And well, I started making this honestly just for fun. I was helping Goose edit this super long video on Lotus and for about 3 days, I didn't have any footage to edit because Goose hasn't recorded anything yet. So I decided, okay, why not I learn some PCB design? So I'm just gonna go through the different things I went through when I was making this keypad and well, where to get started and how to get started if you're interested in designing your own keypad. This won't be a massive giant tutorial, just a guideline. I'll link all the resources I used in the description below. Alright, so first things first, you're going to need KeyCat to PCB design. KeyCat is a free software for PCB PCB designing. I won't go through how to write a keyboard on this video because there's already great tutorials on it out there such as AI03's PCB design guide and Master Zen's making a keyboard guide. I actually went through a couple of designs when I was building my 3 key keypad. I actually had 4 designs in total and the first one was this one. It basically followed AI03's guide except for using 6 keys I went to use 3 and that's because I wanted a 3 key. As you can see there are no LEDs and soldered sockets and micro USB. So in my next edition, I tried implementing a USB-C port and I also added LEDs. I actually didn't know what LEDs to use. I just kept lurking around the AI03 server until I saw what other people were using and I was like, oh, so that, that's the name of the part that's inside all the keyboards. I see. <laughs> and then in my third rendition, I still had the four LEDs and this time I also included in-key LEDs and I also added buttons on the top, like the SIM pad or the SIO pad. But then due to issues figuring out what the dimensions of the case would be, I ended up dropping the idea with the final version. Not to mention, I actually made it to wide like it's already 8cm across that's like a gigantic keypad that's massive and I guess I did kind of make a stupid mistake I mean I was just doing this for fun I wasn't taking it that seriously so the entire time I was using a ruler app on my phone to get measurements and uh I probably shouldn't have done that Please know how big your case is going to be before you start putting things down. You gotta measure. The final version only had like two LEDs at the back because I thought four was overkill and like it was kind of like a mess to route. And I dished the buttons on the top. I sent my design to the AI03 server for any feedback and one of their feedbacks was that I should tilt the microchip on the board to a 45 degree angle. Originally, I wanted it to be like square flat because I didn't want to look like I was copying Lotus. I wasn't, but they told me 45 degrees better and well, they were right. When I changed it to a 45 degree angle, it was easier to route. And then after that, I was done and it was time to start designing the case. Um, okay, so here I'm gonna pause the video and just say that Lotus has five failed three key prototypes. I was not expecting mine to work at all because they failed five. And after all, the people behind these PCBs claim to be a mechanical, electrical, power and material engineer. And if he failed five times, what the chances are me a complete nut job is going to be able to do this. So I decided to just half-ass my design for the case. I was still using my phone ruler as a measurement for things and I was using the trial for AutoCAD because I don't have money. <laughs> yeah, I got it down and exported it to PDF, which turns out for some reason when I exported my drawing out as a PDF, it exported the drawing way too small. And so when I went to the laser cutting place to pick up my case, it looked like this. It's tiny. <laughs> but in any case, it was time to get my build of materials ready and send off my PCB design to JLC PCB. I went with JLC PCB since a lot of people recommended them and they are one of the few manufacturers where you can easily get a very low quantity of units produced. Overall, all this designing and learning that I did took three days. Two weeks later and my PCBs arrive. They sure look nice for something with nothing on it. And so yes, now the hardest part. <laughs> and soldering all those components on. It was quite a pain. I was really afraid of messing things up, especially uh, accidentally shorting anything. So yeah, after checking everything and testing everything, it was time for the moment of truth. A company with five filled prototypes by a guy who is a mechanical, electrical, power and material engineer. Can a random no name- It works. It worked. 
holy shit. And of course, that was not before I had to write my own firmware on QMK for the keypad. I managed to get it down in a couple hours, except for maybe a couple extra hours here and there, adding features that I wanted to add. One of the features was, well, changing the RGB. Well, how Lotus currently does the RGB is that when you plug it in, it immediately goes into a layer where you get to choose whether you want to go to the play mode where the keypad does ZNX, and the other button moves it into change RGB mode. This is every single time you plug it in. I didn't want my keypad to be like that at all. Other things I did was add VR support. VR is a software for QMK keyboards with VR support to quickly change keys on your key maps and uh, well, change your RGB modes and whatnot on the fly. It's really convenient. All right, and now to talk about the parts of my keypad where I failed. <laughs> Everything wasn't perfect in one go. I messed up my in-key RGB LEDs. Turns out the footprint I was using was wrong. And turns out the documentation for those SK mini LEDs it's garbage. Because if you look at the data sheet for the LEDs, the diagrams kind of label the pins wrongly, like flipped from each other, and only one of them is correct. And my footprints used the wrong one, which means that each pin is being connected to the wrong trace because my traces are wrong. But in any case, that was pretty much the only issue I had with my PCB. Turns out my dad actually has a laser engraver for some reason. So I decided why not try engraving stuff on it? Because that's what Lotus loves showing off. They have engraving services. And so I went and started engraving. <laughs> I also printed and cut out some images of uh, Hikari and Rakea to put onto the keypad, try out different things, and it looks really good. And that's it. The keypad is done. I think I did a pretty decent job in my first try PCB designing and making something like this. Even though I made this out of curiosity and in a way spite because I thought it would be funny if I could make a working keypad before Lotus did, but midway through the entire process, I enjoyed it a lot. This is the shit I live for. I love DIY stuff. I don't really have much else to say about a keypad because, well, it's a keypad and that's about it. So we've talked about making the keypad. Now, let's talk about spite. Guiding Honestly, I didn't really want to do this part of the video because I just wanted to talk about my keypad. But then I knew there would be some people who would be like, oh, that's a Lotus keypad, which meant that in the video, I probably would have to say that I made this keypad to try to be faster than Lotus. And then they'll be like, no, you're not faster because Lotus sucks at what they're doing. You're faster because your manufacturer doesn't fuck up. Lotus's manufacturer cut off an entire trace. That's why their PCBs hasn't been working for the past 10 months. Yeah, because of that, I just got to explain why. I really hope electrical engineering students or any student studying anything electricity is watching me right now because, oh boy, this is really funny. <laughs> Alright, so here's two things that people will point out in rebuttal to whatever I'm saying right now. One, that video was mostly focusing on Christian Rose, not the company. And right now, Christian Rose is no longer in the company. It's run by this person called Vex. And well, how do I put this? No. Don't you guys realize that Rose Cables was run by Chris and then when it was going downhill, he passed the business to Pots at the time? This is exactly the same as what's happening to Lotus right now. Chris dips out, he passes the business to someone else and nothing changes. And it's still really easy to tell that Chris is still in the company and managing the Lotus account because he's the only person who can't spell misinformation correctly. And I'm not kidding, he has been spelling misinformation as misinformation since Rose Cables. It's even littered all over inside his slander dog, I think. So, yes. He's still in the company. 
Not to mention, I also noticed that the Lotus account acts a lot like Chris. Things like being rude to customers. He even compared his delays to others exactly like what the video pointed out. So, like, you can't fool me, Chris. And even if Chris isn't on the account, don't you notice that now the whoever's running the Lotus account, they're acting exactly the same way as Chris did. You guys are still getting delays, delays, and delays. And now the second thing that people would tell me about. His prototypes hasn't been working because a trace has been cut off. I have four things to say to that. One, how did it take him five prototypes to notice that a trace was cut off from every single prototype? Two, if that's a trace, how come it's not connected to anything? You know, traces are basically wires, right? And wires should be connected to things for things to work, right? This is as good as me taking a wire, putting it above my keypad, cutting it in half and saying, oh no, now my keypad is not working. Three, if you look closely at the pictures of the PCB that Lotus has posted, you can see that traces have two indentations on the silk screen. But the trace that has been cut off only has one indentation. Four, and that's because it's not a trace. That's a ground fill. Man actually thought the edge of a ground fill was a trace. I don't think this is deliberate lying on Lotus's part, or Chris's part to be honest, since he's the engineer. It's actually because they are just that stupid. And I have a lot more examples of that. Let me just showcase them real quick. This is my favourite post to look back to. It is the funniest thing ever. And over here you can see him saying that there was a problem because the fuse is accepting voltage. This just means that he doesn't know how fuses work. If you don't know what a fuse is, a fuse is a component similar to a resistor where current passes through. Think of like the power box in your house. How the power box works is that current runs through it and if the current gets too high, it trips. That's what a fuse is. If too much current runs through a fuse, the fuse burns. This is to protect the components on the board. So if there's voltage running through the fuse, doesn't that mean it's working? How is that the problem? <laughs> then next, let's look at this legendary video of his. Wait, pause. Is he? He's measuring a VDC circuit with AC! Holy shit! And... pause. That... That isn't a fuse. That's a resistor. That's a 5.1k ohm 0805 package resistor. I know that because I have 100 of them here in a tape reel. <sighs> so this guy can't tell the difference between a fuse and a resistor. Gee, I wonder what that F on the PCB stands for. Also, by the way, his hot swap sockets are soldered on backwards. Alright, so if that isn't enough to convince you that he's not an engineer at all, let's go look at the response he made to the Lotus video. Here, he says that he and his ex-girlfriend worked on the PCB together, which I highly doubt considering the stuff that I just said. Also, let's look at another part of that response. He starts going on talking about the whole PCB rattles freely in the case. And here he just goes on and on, writes a giant paragraph about how it's all about tolerances, he already told me that, and yada 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 yada, and I'm wrong, and he's right. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the Lotus keypad, with our switches on it, if you shake it, there's this sound. So you see, I don't consider myself a magician, but I'm just gonna do this insane magic trick for you guys right now. So I'm just gonna take this off, I'm gonna put it around upside down, and... It's not tolerance, it's Chris. You're just not an engineer. Yep, all he had to do was to have something pressing against the USB port and the rattling will go away. It's really not that hard. Makes this long word vomit about tolerances here a little embarrassing, doesn't it? I think I have spent enough time just talking about this in the video. It, there's really no much point talking about this. I think a lot of people already know they're being scammed. Right now, the website's down. People are struggling to get refunds. It's just overall a shitty situation for the customers. I know why the Lotus 3 key prototypes hasn't been working. It's a really dumb mistake. And... I really want to say it because it's not even a basic electrical engineering thing that you can laugh at. This is common sense stuff that a normal person would be able to laugh at too, but I don't want to say it and I can't say it because I have no interest in helping Lotus. So Lotus is going down a lot like how Rose Cables did and I wouldn't be surprised if Chris is jumping businesses. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can't open source my keypads right now because I don't want Lotus to just take them. To be honest, at this point, why not just pay some person in China to design the PCB for you? I don't get it. But when Lotus crashes, I'll make my stuff open sourced and I'll fix the LED footprints and stuff like that. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Can you make a 2K pad for a ring and index players? I already made a 3K one. I made the PCB a while ago. You can pre-order it. If you're wondering why I don't have a prototype, it's because it's pretty much the exact same as the 2K, so it doesn't matter, right? It actually doesn't matter um, if I have the prototype or not. It's the same PCB, so it works, and everything's fine with it.